Hey, how are we doing today, guys? So today I wanted to talk about this, the Galaxy Watch. And uh, I want to preface this video by saying if you're looking for a video that's pretty much going to go over the, uh, the health tracking and the fitness tracking, this is not that video. So uh, go ahead and find another video that may be down in the suggestions. Um, I pretty much got this watch and any other smartwatch I've had in the past simply for the reasons of being able to manage notifications easier and just to have a cool piece of wearable technology. So if you're looking for how good the heartbeat sensor is or the fitness tracking, uh, I don't really use it that much for those purposes. Now I do use it to listen to music on Bluetooth headphones when I don't want to take my phone and stuff. And I'll sort of get into that, but pretty much I want to go over the things I like and the things I don't like about this watch and pretty much if it's worth it in 2020 with all the other options you have out. So let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so the first thing I want to talk about, which is the same thing I want to talk about with any device that you're thinking about picking up, and that is price. So right now on Amazon, you can get this for as low as $109 if you don't mind picking it up used or refurbished. And uh, the average price I'm seeing for uh, one is about $125, $126. I'll have those linked down below if you want to check them out. And saying that, I pretty much want to break this video down into likes and dislikes. And at the end, I'm pretty much going to wrap it up and give you an overall uh, idea of what I think of this watch after having owned it for almost two years now. And at this point in time, uh, I'm a little bit more lenient towards uh, different things about this watch simply because the price has dropped so much. I think I paid like almost $300 for this watch when I bought it. And now that you can buy it for such a cheap price, I feel like some of the things aren't really um, that big of a deal, but it was to me because I bought it at such an expensive price. So the first thing I want to talk about that I like about this watch is the fact that it has this nice, this really nice look to it that can be sporty or it can be uh, classy, depending on what type of band you put on it. This nice bezel around it and the face and the different faces you can uh, put on the watch make it able to suit any type of um, any type of uh, mood you're feeling, I, I would say. I will say that I have the 46 millimeter version and it's a bit big. Uh, it fits pretty good on my wrist. I, I would say I have pretty big hands and uh, a pretty narrow wrist, but it fits really well and I like uh, bigger watch faces. Um, I pretty much only wear smart watches, so bigger face means bigger display and that's pretty much the only thing I want when I'm looking at the size of the display on a, uh, or the size of the watch on a smart watch. Now moving on to the thing that I dislike most about this watch and I don't really want to harp on it too much because it's not so much of an issue if you don't use the watch like me. I am the type of person who uses the always on display and I have to have the brightness always turned up to max and the GPS settings turned on. So I always have like the most amount of things that I really don't need to have turned on, but I have turned on anyway. Um, and it tends to wear the battery life down. I would say with the uh, way that I use the watch, I usually end up getting about three days of battery life. And um, I guess that's decent, but I've gotten to the point now where I don't feel like charging up the watch every three days, especially considering I work from home and sometimes I'll forget to charge it uh, for when I go out or something like that. And three days just seems like not enough time. And I feel like this watch dies a lot, even when you don't have it on, say if you just uh, take it off and you don't wear it for a few days and you go to pick it up and it's dead, which seems kind of strange since the display is turned off. It seems like it should automatically go into some type of power saving mode if you haven't used it. Now you can set one yourself and it'll prompt you to do this if you get below a certain uh, battery percentage, which brings me to my next point. And the thing I like about this is the battery saving mode on this is really good. And if you want to use it all the time, you can get drastically better battery life. I'm talking like over 10 days, like you won't have a problem at all keeping this watch on if you use like the mi the minimum of features that you can. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the software. I really like the software on this watch, although it does uh, see, it does still get uh, stability updates and security updates and stuff like that. I, I've never really had a problem with this watch lagging or not being able to keep up with the things that I wanted to do. And that has been a plus even after all this time that I've owned the watch. I don't think you have any problems like that at all. It may not be the newest software, but uh, what they've got running on the Galaxy, uh, the Galaxy Watch 3 is not too different. So I don't feel like there should be a big problem there. But I do have one issue uh, with the software and I don't really think it's with the software per se. I think it's specifically with Bixby. So 
voice to text on this thing sucks. It takes too long. Like honestly, I would rather just look at the watch and see the notification. If I need to reply, just pick up my phone because it in no way matches with yeah, Google Assistant. I think it has something to do with Bixby because uh, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Another dislike, the fact that this watch does not have Google Assistant. I do not like Bixby. I use a lot of Samsung devices and I never use Bixby on any of those devices. And I just feel like Samsung should stop trying to push away from that whole Google ecosystem because it works. And until they come out with something better, it irritates me that I don't really want to use the voice assistant. I not don't want to use it. I do not use it at all. That was just one of those things I wanted to point out. I would say that's probably as equally annoying to me as the battery life, though I would say even more because when I want to just answer a text message quickly on the watch, I'll probably just type it on the watch. Like I won't end up like if I if I don't have my phone near me, I'll just end up typing it on the watch or typing it on my phone because the voice to chat is just irritatingly slow. Like I don't know why it's so irritatingly slow, but it just seems very slow to me, uh, especially when it's connected to my phone's internet or the Wi-Fi at the house. I don't feel like it should be that slow. And that brings me to my next point. You have a pretty good amount of different ways to input when you're typing, not just voice. You can also draw the letters and it'll do this autofill thing. That's actually pretty convenient and pretty good at predicting what I'm going to write. And then you have like the basic number pad with the three letters per number. And uh, you can use all of these different ways to get out a message, though I don't really use them too much. I do use the drawing thing. Uh, it can even detect like emojis, so that's pretty cool. The next thing I wanted to talk about is something I really, really like, and I wish every other smartwatch implemented this feature. Now, of course, you can't do it on something like the Apple Watch because it has a square display, but this rotating bezel is literally the best thing on any smartwatch to date. Like, I feel like if it doesn't, like I have a few other smartwatches and I just miss the rotating bezel. Even the ones that don't have this actual metal bezel like the, uh, the Sport or the Active Watch, you can actually just rotate your finger around the edge of the screen and it'll act as a virtual bezel, which is really, really, really nice. On top of it being a great feature to navigate through the watch, it's, it also just feels really good. You get like a vibration feedback and you also get the physical click of it moving along with actually seeing the animations on the screen. And I know this is gonna sound weird, but uh, to me, that's like one of the biggest decisions when it came to me purchasing it. Like I had tried other watches that didn't have this feature. Even though some of them had bezels, they didn't rotate or they didn't have the option to use that rotation within the watch, which I don't see why more watches haven't latched onto this feature. But, you know, I don't make the watches, I, I just review them, so. Another thing I wanted to talk about is accessories for this watch. You can get covers for the actual sides of the watch that come in all different types of colors and you can replace the bezel with different colored bezels and there is a plethora of actual bands for this watch. I have a metal band, I have the sport band that actually came with this and this like faux leather band and they're super cheap. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them delivered really quickly and there's so many different options. So. It's like, like I said earlier, with uh, this kind of being like a universal design and depending on the band that you put on it, you could literally customize this watch to fit any occasion. And then on top of that, you could just go into the software or into the Galaxy Store and change the watch face, which brings me to my next point. The Galaxy Store, the watch faces, I feel like they have more watch faces than any other watch or store that I have used. And I feel like they're more, um, they're, they're, they're more manageable than uh, say uh, the ones you can pick up like in the Google store for Google OS or Wear OS watches and stuff like that. I feel like they're more customizable and more made specifically for the watch and that makes them more user friendly, more uh, they look better and there's just so many benefits to them actually being made specifically for, uh, for the Galaxy watches. And just like the last thing I wanted to touch on is connectivity, uh, which is pretty much the same with any Galaxy device. Kind of why I just wanted to throw this in there last, any Samsung device. Uh, once you connect it to that um, the Galaxy wearables app, connection is just always instant. You never have an issue. Same thing with my earbuds or other Samsung watches that I've used in the past. The connection is just so seamless, so quick that you never ever have to worry about it. One thing that kind of irritates me about um, all of these uh, Galaxy products or Samsung products, that isn't really a big issue, but it irritates me all the same. Why so many updates? I feel like they could like condense these into, because uh, it's not like it's something fixing a bug that's like inherently like something that's like breaking the watch. 
but there's so many updates. It's literally every day I either have a watch for my phone, my watch, or my headset. Not a big deal, I just kind of wanted to mention it because it does happen a lot. And if you guys are watching this video and you're planning on switching from like an Apple Watch, let me know in the comment section down below if Apple Watches update as much as, or Apple products in general update as much as uh, Samsung products because literally every single day it seems like I have an update. Alrighty guys, so I pretty much just wanted to wrap this up saying that Yes, I definitely think this is a very good purchase, especially for the price. If it was still priced full price, I would have to say no, but because of the price drop is, is like the main reason why I'm thinking that this is a really good option uh, compared to some of the other options out there. You get awesome software, awesome connectivity, and you just get a watch that looks and feels very premium and can be customized to the point where you could uh, use it in a variety of situations. And that's the end of the video, guys. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.